In the videos, we've seen Grace navigate the Renle Chateau mystery by deciphering an obscure document called Le Serpent Rouge, the Red Snake. Oh my god! It's a copy of Le Serpent Rouge! This riddle is fascinating. You can almost see what it's hinting at. I really want to solve it. Several of the characters also mention knowing about the document, though they've never seen it. Who's got a copy of Le Serpent Rouge? There is no such document. What is Le Serpent Rouge? It's a pamphlet containing a riddle. And it's hard to find a copy, I take it. That is right. It was deposited into the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, but then it disappeared. The rumor is that the authors who wrote the riddle died mysteriously. The poem as presented to us is in English, and it's made up of 13 segments, each named for the signs of the zodiac plus one. And in it there are clues, however obscure, that lead Grace and us to the treasure, such as it is. But there really is a document called Le Serpent Rouge, and it really was deposited in Le Bibliothèque Nationale in 1967. The document itself was five pages, written on a typewriter, in French. The full title of the document was Le Serpent Rouge, Notes on Saint Germain de Prez and Saint Sulpice de Paris. Saint Germain and Saint Sulpice are churches in Paris. The original document also came along with some roughly drawn maps of France and some genealogies. Just like in the game, nobody knows who wrote the document for sure, but for reasons I'm going to lay out, it is thought to have some relevance to Rennes Le Chateau. Far from being lost or stolen, as Madeline says, the document can be found online, in full, including several translations by interested scholars. The supposed authors, Pierre Fuguer, Louis saint maxent and Gaston de Coker do not appear to exist as real people. Several sources I found, including the bestseller Holy Blood, Holy Grail, state that all three of these authors were found hanged within a two-day span in March 1967, though no citation is given in the text as to where that information came from. I want to stress that it's very hard to find reliable information on anything regarding Rennes Le Chateau or Le Serpent Rouge because most of the scholarship surrounding this is by people who are steeped in the occult and in conspiracy theories. And it's very difficult for me to ascertain whether or not these men ever really existed. I'm sort of of the school of thinking that if there's no footnote, there's no fact. And I kind of doubt that if these authors ever really did exist, that they were really all killed in this manner. Even more likely is that these individuals did kill themselves, but instead were added as names after the fact, a hypothesis that I think you'll see is justified. There is no doubt that the document itself was made to raise eyebrows. The illustrations contained in it clearly call out the Rosicrucians, one of the supposed occult groups like the Priory of Sion, Knights Templar, and Freemasons like in the game that are said to be involved in the Ren Enigma. The first page of Le Serpent Rue says, in French, Before reading the following lines, the reader should remember, After a long sleep, the same theories reappear. Without doubt, they return to us with new, richer clothes, but the foundations remain the same, and the new mask which they wear should not mislead the man of knowledge. This was supposedly said by Abbe Waro. The image bears a caption, Discover one by one 64 stones. Already the document is apparently gobbledygook. If it was designed at all, it was designed to be obscure to tantalize someone of a certain disposition, the kind that the townspeople ridicule time and again. Do you know anything about the treasure, Simone? Well, I have seen many treasure seekers come and go, mademoiselle, but I have never thought much of the idea myself. The next page says that it is the foreword, but includes the section names that we see in the game. In the real document, Aquarius reads, How strange are the manuscripts of this friend, great traveler of the unknown. They appear to me separately, yet they form a whole for him who knows that the colors of the rainbow give a white unity, or for the artist for whom the black springs out from under his paintbrush, made from the six colors of his magic palette. Nothing like this appears in the game's version of the document. To me, this doesn't mean much. Several authors have taken only a part of this, the reference to manuscripts, 
and gone in any direction that they wanted. In particular, they immediately turned to the supposed genealogies found by Abbé Saunière inside this hollow in a church pillar. Now, as the game says, there really is a church of Magdalene in Rennes le Chateau, and there really was a pillar that was dismantled and removed by Saunière. Whether there was a hollow containing secret genealogy charts, I seriously doubt. But other authors say that Aquarius doesn't refer to the genealogies at all, and instead refer to other mystical documents, like the Tablet of Enoch. Enoch was one of Noah's ancestors. That white comes from adding the colors of the rainbow might refer to a simple fact, or it might refer to some other unifying thing, something divine. Black or night, in another translation, spurting out from a combination of six magic colors, seems like a suggestive image, but doesn't mean anything to me. Pisces, in the real document, says, This friend, how to introduce him to you? His name remained a mystery, but his number is that of the famous seal. How to describe him to you? Perhaps like the pilot of the indestructible ark, impassive like a column on his white rock, scanning towards the south midday, beyond the black rock. I think most people agree that the seal refers to the seal of Solomon. But who is the nameless person that Pisces talks about? I've seen references to Jehovah, a name for God never actually written in the Hebrew texts, but supposedly told to Moses by God himself. Enoch, one of Noah's ancestors, is also cited by other sources, since later Pisces also talks about the Ark, though it's not clear whether he means the Ark that was built for the Flood or the Ark of the Covenant, which housed the Ten Commandments. What the references to white rock and black rock are anyone's guess. There's no shortage of theories on the subject. Monsieur Wilkes, everyone has a theory. So far, the document in the game bears little resemblance to the real-life document, and thank goodness for that. No amount of Sydneying could get us any kind of progress with verbiage like this. But then comes Ares. In my arduous pilgrimage, I tried to clear a path with the sword, crossing the inextricable vegetation of the woods. I wanted to reach the residence of the Sleeping Beauty, in whom certain poets saw the queen of a past realm. In desperation of finding my way again, the parchments of this friend were for me, the thread of Ariadne." This is very close to the Aquarius passage that Jane Jensen included in the game. In my arduous search, I was trying to hack away with my sword through the dense vegetation of the woods like some pawn of destiny. I wanted to reach the place of the sleeping beauty, in which some poets can see the queen of a lost kingdom. Desperate to find the way, I laid down the path of Ra and was illuminated. It's so similar that many of the changes are just in the translation. Other than the reference to the friend and Ariadne, this is practically the same passage. I have to hand it to Jane Jensen because getting one of these passages to almost sort of make sense within the game's logic is pretty incredible. It actually gives me a new appreciation for the game. Now as far as what the passage actually means, Ariadne was a sleeping beauty in the tale of the Labyrinth and the Minotaur in ancient Greek mythology. Ariadne helped Theseus escape from the labyrinth by giving him a ball of thread. Theseus uses the thread to find his way out of the labyrinth after he kills the Minotaur, but he leaves Ariadne while she sleeps on Naxos. Some people propose that a labyrinth actually exists underneath the mountains of Renle Chateau. Needless to say, there's no real evidence of that. Taurus says, Thanks to him, from now on by measured steps and a sure eye, I can discover the sixty-four dispersed stones of the perfect cube that the brothers of the beauty of the black wood escaping in the pursuit of the usurpers had scattered on their way whilst they fled from the white fort. To a certain extent, this mirrors Gemini in the game. I can find 64 stones of the perfect cube which the knights of the beauty of the black wood had scattered when they fled from the white fort while they were being pursued by the usurpers. Just like in the game, I found that basically everyone who takes Le Serpent Rouge seriously believes that this is a reference to the floor in the church at Rennes le Chateau. The church floor forms a chessboard with the devil or Asmodeus at one side and Saint Germain or Jesus at the other in opposition. 
The White Fort also does seem to refer to Chateau de Blanchefort, literally White Fort. At this point, even someone who's a total skeptic starts to see that maybe there is something here relevant to Renla Chateau. In the real document, Gemini says, To reassemble the scattered stones, work with square and compass to put them back in regular order. Look for the line of the meridian in going from the south to the north, finally in all directions, to obtain the desired solution, stopping in front of the 14 stones marked with a cross. The circle being the ring, coil of the snake, and the crown, and to him the diadem of this queen of castle. Compare this with the game. Reassemble the scattered stones and, working with square and compass, put them into ranks. The knightly order of the perfect cube fits within and gives structure to Our Lady's protector, the Heavenly Quartet. Now, just like in the game, this passage really does seem to refer to putting squares on a map. It specifically refers to a meridian going from south to north, stopping in front of 14 stones. And then it says to find a crown, just as we did in the game. Some envision a much larger chessboard than the one that we propose in Gabriel Knight 3, instead encompassing all of Europe and Northern Africa. Beyond that, I don't care to speculate. Clearly Jane Jensen invented her own idea for where things ought to be, in keeping with her invention of an underground Temple of Solomon that we saw on Wilkes' map. The Real Cancer says, The stones of the mosaic, paving of the sacred place, could be alternatively black and white, and Jesus, like Asmodeus, observing their alignment. My view seems incapable of seeing the summit, where the marvelous sleeping one remained hidden. Not being Hercules with magic power, how to decode the mysterious symbols carved by the observers of the past? In the sanctuary, however, the stoop, fountain of love of the believers, reminds us of these words, By this sign you shall conquer. Again, we're seeing much of the same verbiage that appeared in the game. The mosaic tiles of the sacred place alternate black or white, and Jesus, like Asmodeus, observes their alignment. In the sanctuary is the font, fountain of love of those who believe, reminding us of these words, By this sign you will conquer. Just like in the game, the real-life water stoop at the church of Renle Chateau bears the words, Parse signet te vaincre, By this sign shall you conquer him. Bukele mentions that the phrase is incorrect. It, it, what is it? The proper phrase is Parse signet tu vaincre, By this sign shall you conquer meaning naturally the sign of the cross. As said by the first Christian Roman Emperor Constantine in 312 AD. No reference that I found thinks that this line in Renla Chateau refers to anything but this. In real life, Leo says, From her that I wanted to be free, rose toward me the emanations of perfume, which permeate the sepulchre. Once some called her Isis, queen of the beneficent springs, Come to me, all you who suffer and who are overwhelmed, and I will comfort you. Otherwise, Madeline, with the famous vase full of healing balm, the initiates know the true name, Notre Dame de Cross. This is almost exactly the same wording from Pisces in the game. Long ago, her name was Isis, Queen of the Benevolent Springs. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Others knew her as Magdalene with the celebrated vows of healing balm. The initiated knew her to be the Lady of the Lake and Notre Dame de Cross. Note that the words that are capitalized differ from the real and the fictional version. The words, come to me all you who suffer and who are overwhelmed, appear underneath the bas-relief fresco on the wall in the church. Another clue that Le Serpent Rouge is referring to Saunier's church. But what does this passage mean? The passage refers to Madeline, a modern French name which came from Magdalene, as in Saint Mary Magdalene. And here we see her with a cross, a silver vase, and a skull at her feet, just as in the game, and just as it's described in Le Serpent Rouge. As you might expect, I don't believe that similar statues appear in the churches at Bougarac, Saint Jude et le Basu, and Castaza. And that's just a way that Jane Jensen designed for us to put a circle on the map of Cuiza. Virgo in the real Le Serpent Rouge says, 
I was like the shepherds of the famous painter Poussin, confused in front of the enigma, et in Arcadia ego. The voice of the blood race, would it show me the image of an ancestral past? Yes, the light of the genius crossed my mind. I saw again, I understood. I knew now this fabulous secret, and marvelous when from the leaps of the four horsemen, the shoes of one horse had left four imprints on the rock. Here is the sign which Delacroix had given in one of three pictures from the Chapel of Angels. Here is the seventh sentence, which a hand had traced. Deliver me from the mire, so that I do not stay there sinking. Two times is, embalmer and embalmed, miraculous vase of the eternal white lady of legends. Various parts of this passage appear in Gabriel Knight III's version of Les Serpents Rouge, but never the complete sentences. I recall the inscription, et in Arcadia ego, blank, blank, blank. It was guarded by the three knight's towers, the rooks, on the circuit of the divine horsemen of the abyss. The huge unleashed beast at the foot of the white mountain becomes scarlet with greed and drunk with stolen and profane communion. Deliver me out of the mire. Just like in the game, Le Serpent Rouge explicitly references the painting The Arcadian Shepherds by Nicolas Poussin, which bears the inscription Et in Arcadia Ego. Arcadia was an idyllic land in Greek mythology, and Wikipedia tells us that the I in the inscription refers to death. In other words, even in the utopia of Arcadia, death comes for all men. Because the words are written on a tomb, the phrase is commonly thought to mean that death exists even in paradise, and yet... Yes? The way it is worded is not the complete thought, or even proper Latin. Unlike what Madeline says in the game, the phrase is well-formed Latin. In the game, the location called Poussin's tomb depicts a large stone parallel piped. Presumably, this refers to a tomb found in Les Pontilles, built by Jean Gaubert in 1903 to bury his wife and grandmother near. Madeline says that it was the model for the painting, but since Poussin painted his image in 1637 and the tomb was built in 1903, Clearly, he could not have been painting a picture of this tomb. Note that the tomb is actually no longer standing in Rennes Chateau. The bodies were disinterred and moved, and the tomb itself was destroyed by the person who owned the land in 1988. The landowner said one of the reasons he destroyed it was treasure seekers were continually sneaking onto his property. In the real Le Serpent Rouge, Libra says, Started in the shadows, my journey could only be finished in light. At the window of the ruined house, I gazed across the trees, stripped by autumn to the summit of the mountain. The cross of the crest stood out under the midday sun. It was the 14th and the biggest of all with its 35 centimeters. Here I am therefore on my horse ride on a divine steed crossing the abyss. I began my journey in the shadows and completed it in the light. At the window of the ruined house, I looked across the trees denuded by autumn. Interestingly, none of the analysis I read thought that the ruined house referred to Chateau de Blanchefort as it does in the game. One reference thought that this was a reference to the Tower of Solomon or to the Tower of Babel. Also, nobody seems to know what 14th and 35 centimeters refers to. No theory was even given in the stuff that I read. Jane Jensen removed that part entirely. The real Le Serpent Rouge says, Celestial visions for him who remembers the four works of M. Signol around the meridian line, to the choir itself from the sanctuary from which beams this source of love from one to another. I turn around, passing the side of the rose of the P to that of the S, and then from the S to the P, and the spiral in my mind becoming like the monstrous octopus expelling its ink. The shadows obscure the light, I am dizzy, and I hold my hand to my mouth, biting instinctively my palm, perhaps like Olier in his coffin. Curses, I understand the truth. He is gone. But to him, too, in doing the good, like him of the flowery tomb. But how many times have they sacked the house, leaving only the embalmed corpses and numerous metal objects which they could not carry? 
What strange mystery conceals the new temple of Solomon, built by the children of St. Vincent? In Gabriel Night 3, only one part of this passage remains. What strange mystery is concealed in the new temple of Solomon, built by the children of St. Vincent? In the game, this led us to a large underground hollow found by Wilkes and laid out using the chess grid. But the real Le Serpent Rouge is referring to a place that does not take place inside the game, but is mentioned in the title of Le Serpent Rouge, the Church of St. Sulpice in Paris. Indeed, four paintings by Emile Signol are housed in that church. Why are these paintings, which I have not been able to find any good images of, so prominent in Le Serpent Rouge that they appear in its title? That and the P and S suggest that we detour for a curious bit of history. This man is Pierre Plantard. Plantard wanted to be the king of France, so he founded a society in 1956. This group was called the Priory of Sion. In Gabriel Knight III, the Priory is one of the secret societies that branched off from the Templars and regularly faced off with the Freemasons. If the Priory and the Templars were both supporters of the bloodline, then how come they split up? I don't know. But here in the real world, the Priory was nothing but a hoax invented by Plantard, a phony secret society that claimed to have existed since 1099. He claimed to be a Merovingian heir to the crown. Six years later, 1962, a book was published that claimed, as the game says, that Abbe Saunier discovered the treasure of Blanche of Castile in Rennes-le-Chateau. Plantard was inspired by this story and wrote his own book to fit in with the claims of that book. Plantard also started to plant false documents in the Bibliothèque Nationale, which gave the secret history of the Priory of Sion. These documents contained fake family trees showing Plantard as a legitimate heir to Dagobert II of the Merovingian line. In 1967, Plantard collaborated with Gerard de Sade on a book called L'Or de Rennes, which printed two parchments allegedly discovered by Saunier in the church. These documents are shown in the game exactly and are used to help with the geometry puzzles. Jane Jensen didn't have to fake the documents. Plantard had already faked them for her. Just like in the game, through a torturous process of weeding letters down, you can find the message, Shepherdess, no temptation that Poussin Teniers hold the key. Peace, 681, by the cross and this horse of God, I complete this demon guardian at midday. Or to the meridian, blue apples. Unlike in the game, where the winery was the main focus, this message in real life appears to have no meaning. Plantard was definitely behind the modern occult idea of the Priory of Sion, and behind these parchments. He consistently insinuated that a treasure was in Rennes-le-Chateau. Is there still a secret at Rennes-le-Chateau? But the secret is not only in Rennes-le-Chateau, it is also autour de Rennes-le-Chateau. We have to ask, was he, in fact, behind Le Serpent Rouge? Will the treasure of Rennes-le-Château ever be found? Ici, vous me, vous me parlez d'un trésor matériel. Nous ne parlons pas de trésor matériel. Disons simplement qu'il existe un secret à Rennes-le-Château. Il est possible qu'il existe autre chose autour de Rennes-le-Château. In real life, Ophiacus says, cursing the profaners in their ashes and those who live in their tracks, leaving the abyss where I was plunged in, finishing the gesture of horror. Here is the proof that I knew the secret of the seal of Solomon, that of this queen. I have visited the hidden residences. To this, dear reader, be careful not to add or remove one iota. Meditate, meditate again. The vile lead of my writing contains perhaps the purest gold. Capricorn, I am aware of the scent of the perfume which impregnates the sepulchre of the one I must release. Cursing the profane in their ashes and those who follow their ways, I return from the darkness while making a gesture of horror at the abyss into which I had plunged. Here is the proof that I knew the secret seal of Solomon and had visited the secret places of the queen who watches over the king. They must be talking about going down into the cave. Take heed, my friend. Do not add or take away one iota. Think, and think again.
The base lead of my words may contain the purest gold. Let he who has the understanding use it with wisdom. This passage is nearly identical to the real Le Serpent Rouge. In the game, of course, we will be led to the actual underground temple of Solomon. In real life, well, nobody has any real idea what this means, if it means anything. Jane Jensen actually designed the game around this puzzle to an extent, and this seems like the clearest sign. The real Le Serpent Rouge Sagittarius says, Returning then to the white hill, the sky having opened its gates, it seemed there is a presence near me, the feet in the water like him who has just been baptized, turning myself again towards the east. Facing me I saw unrolling without end his coils, the enormous Serpent Rouge, sighted in the parchments. Salty and bitter, the enormous beast unleashed became at the foot of this white mountain, red with anger. Facing me I see unwinding endless by its coils, the enormous red serpent mentioned in the documents, rigid and bitter. The huge unleashed beast at the foot of the white mountain becomes scarlet with greed and drunk with stolen and profane communion. At least one author is sure that the red snake referred here is actually the Red Sea. In the game, it refers to a snake-like railroad track. Yep, that's it. That's the red serpent. That is weird. It must point out something. Anyway, for something that is the namesake of the document, it doesn't seem real clear what this is. The Red Sea doesn't seem very... snaky to me. The real Le Serpent Rouge ends with Capricorn. My emotion was great. Deliver me from the mire, I said, and I awoke immediately. I haven't told you, in fact, that this was a dream, that I'd had this 17th January, feast day of St. Sulpice. Afterward, my trouble persisting, I wanted after reflection to tell you a story by Peralt. Here then, dear reader, in the pages which follow, the result of a dream having soothed me into the world of the strangers and unknown. Good comes from him that does good. St. Sulpice, good comes to him that does good, the 17th of January and Peralt never appear in Gabriel Knight 3's version of Le Serpent Rouge. January 17th is the saint's day of St. Sulpice. Both St. Sulpice Church and Rennes Chateau are both located on the Paris Meridian. But finally, Charles Perrault is referenced. Perrault might be better known as Mother Goose. He is the author of fairy tales such as Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, Puss in Boots, Sleeping Beauty, and Bluebeard. These fairy tales were later rewritten by the Grimm brothers. I have to wonder whether the mention of a fairy tale right at the end of Le Serpent Rouge isn't a sign that somebody is trying to have a little bit of fun with us. Very little attention is ever paid to the remaining pages of Le Serpent Rouge. They don't seem to have anything to do with the poem that everyone pays attention to. They do have a genealogy chart that includes Dagobert II, but there's no mention of Jesus or of Plantard. They also include a map of St. Sulpice and another church, St. Germain, in Paris. So there you have it. I would say fact versus fiction, but I'm thinking really it's just two versions of fiction. Jane Jensen's version leads us on a solvable adventure to find the entrance to a secret underground temple. That's it! That's the chessboard. Way to go, kid. Whereas Le Serpent Rouge, in real life, hasn't led to much except for a large portion of occult and conspiracy theory writing since the 1960s. Right. I just got a copy of Le Serpent Rouge. I think I'll take the game's version any day. <laughs>